Hello, welcome to my channel, I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to give in my thoughts on WWE Raw, 10th of April 2017. It's the Superstar Shake-Up edition of Monday Night Raw. Michael Cole says this might be the final night they are together because no one is safe. Uh, then John Cena's music plays and Ms. Maurice make their way out to the ring as John Cena and uh, Nikki Bella. I love this stick. Miz said, the champ is here! He said, rule number one, if John Cena's household states, nobody can chant Cena sucks. <laughs> the chant, the crowd chant Cena sucks. Miz says he's with his fiance Nikki, who truly loves and did not pose at WrestleMania for the free publicity. The last time you saw his remade, you happy by saying we're going to go to Hollywood. Miz, oh no, Maurice, Nikki, says Hollywood does not want them. Miz said they think and they are not good actors. Miz says the word robotic, so the smartest move they could do is go back to Raw. Dean Ambrose's music makes it. Uh, sorry, Dean Ambrose's music plays and he makes his way out of the ring. Dean says he's glad to see John and Nikki. He said he was nervous because he did not think he would recognise anyone here since he was moving. He congratulates them on the big engagement. Miss Charles said Dean, it's not John and Mickey. Uh, Dean says he wants to finish. He congratulates them for being back on board with the engagement and beating Ms. Maurice at WrestleMania because they are the worst. Dean congratulates them on all the success in Hollywood. He mentions that John Cena is a uh, voiceover for the pianist commercials. He said that he tells Cena not to do the Marine 5. Miz explains to Dean that they're not John Cena and Nikki Bella. They are Ms. Maurice. And he goes, oh, okay, I can do this then. And then gives D Dean a dirty deeds. Great opening segment. I love the Nikki Bella and John Cena stick they're doing. It's absolutely fantastic. All the all these guys have moved now. So Miz, Maurice, and Dean Ambrose are on Raw, which is good. Who will SmackDown get? That's the main thing. We'll have to find that one out tomorrow. Uh, then Kurt Angle is on the phone. Sami Zayn enters and says Kurt will probably be getting it from everyone. He wants to know if he's still on Raw. People. He says people have been saying he belongs on SmackDown, but he, things have changed now. Kurt is here. He says Sammy's a huge asset to draw, but he, there's a lot of interest from SmackDown. Sammy thinks about it and he wants to clarify. Miz and Maurice enter, and Maurice says that they deserve better than this. Sammy walks them to Raw. Miz tells Sammy that the superstars are talking. Sammy says Miz to tell him what he wants. Kurt tells Sammy he's still on Raw and that Miz will have to earn respect tonight against Sami Zayn. Uh, it's an alright. I like seeing Kurt Angle. There was no jokes, but he's like straight to the point. I do like this. He is a great GM so far, so let's hope he can continue that. Then the New Day come out, and since Kofi Kingston is injured, spoiler for newsroom there on Wednesday, Biggie brings out a blow up doll to play the part of Kofi Kingston. Seriously, a blow up doll? Has that been used by Xavier Woods? Now Paige is not available for him. Just got to ask that one there. Big E says that men... This man has come to surprise you, but this is not Kofi in the ring. <laughs> Seriously? We have a light we didn't notice. Xavier says, well, he may not be here physically. He's here in spirit. Xavier tells a revival to come to the ring. We then have a match. The, the New Day versus the revival. Uh, Wilder tags in Woods with form to Wilder. Wilder stops Big E from hitting Midnight Hour as Woods comes off the turnbuckle. Diamond. Uh, sorry. Uh, Dawson and Wilder hit a version of the Shattered Machine for the win. So that's an amazing win for them. I think this definitely proves that the New Day will be going to SmackDown because I think they'll have a lot more spare prospect over there. And to be a lot better over there, I think. Uh, then we are back to Neville in the back. Sorry, Neville's in the back. He's, he's asked about facing Austin Aries again for the Cruiserweight title. Neville says he's already proven that Austin Aries is not on his level. CJ Perkins interrupts and he tells Neville that he will eat his words someday. Neville asks who will be the one to do that. Perkins says it will be him. Neville says he did not think Perkins can take his title. He says TJ will never give him a chance again. Neville says Perkins has to take a long, hard look at himself. He says TJ was the first champion now. His career is a joke. Ever since 205 Live, you've been overlooked. Chances are that you've gotten... To have got, You should have gotten to have gone to Austin Aries. The only person who's respected 
TJ is him. Austin Aries stops by and asks if he heard his name. Aries wants to make sure he heard what Neville had to say. Aries said he might have some classes on on at night inside, but he can see Neville is lying. Neville says he's the only man that can prove title chain chances. Neville leaves. Aries asks Perkins if he is buying what Neville is saying. Perkins walks away and Aries is left alone with his banana. Whew! Sorry, that was a lot of words. The banana. That's a word. Moving on. That was a good segment. Kurt Hawkins is in the ring and he tells everyone to prepare to face the facts. That he's the greatest get since the Louisiana Purchase. He wants a celebration because he's moving to Raw. Big Show comes out of the ring. Hawkins goes for a hook. And then Big Show just punches him in the face. And leaves. I'm sorry. It was just so damn funny. Just a little Big Show. Boom. Oh my god. I'm just, just ridiculous. Uh, then we go back to Neville on commentary for the next match. Aries versus Perkins. Aries comes off the turnbuckle with a forearm. Then Aries poses on the ringside barrier. Neville goes to the ring. Aries gets back in the ring to spot the distraction from Neville. Perkins with an inside cradle for the three count. They even have the audacity to say that TJ won with interference from Neville. He stood there. I'm sorry, but he, all he did was stand there. Didn't try to interfere or anything. So fuck your interference up your ass. After the match, Perkins attacked Aries. And Perkins looks at Neville before hitting the detonation kick. Is this going to be the next few going forward after Payback? I sure hope so, to be fair. Oh, and we are back in the ring, and Seth Rollins makes his way to the ring. Seth says it feels good to be out here again. He did not know if he would be able to stand on in the ring on his own two feet and talk to you again. The day he did everything to get ready for WrestleMania, and he could not think about after WrestleMania. Seth says he was more... In more pain after WrestleMania than any time before. Physically, he was messed up, but emotionally, mentally, he was at peace because he, he left it all in the ring and he did it. So I said, We did it. We slayed the King of Kings. He said he wanted the opportunity to step back. Say so thank you for giving him a second chance and having his back. He said that WrestleMania was not the finish line. He's just getting started on Raw. He says he has some scores to settle against Samoa Joe. He wants to get his hands on the Universal title. Based on what happened at WrestleMania, he might not get those opportunities. We see the footage uh, when Stephanie went through the table. The crowd chant, thank you, Seth. <laughs> Seth does not think he'll be named employee of the month. <laughs> I wish she were. That would be great. And he said that Stephanie does not handle failure well. She comes back and she will have Seth's face and join mind of the failure in her husband's defeat. If it's not already public and number one, he'll probably move up the list. So... He's on the list. So says he might. Maybe she should go to SmackDown because it's the easy way out. Uh, deal with deal with Shane instead of Stephanie. Seth said he took the easy out easy way out once before and he won't do it again. If you want to ship him to Tuesday night, you better get an army because he's not leaving without a fight. Kurt Angle music plays and he makes his way to the ring and we get the you sir. You suck, Chance, because Kurt Angle is amazing. Kurt tells Seth he's going to be straight with him. It's true, Stephanie made it clear she wanted you gone. If they had this discussion two weeks ago before Mania, you would be gone. I was Mania, you saw something special. Kurt said that Seth was a one legged man who won an ass kicking contest. Uh, Kurt says he's not here to play politics. He sh- his show has Seth Rollins. He says as long as he's general manager, Seth has a home on Raw. Kurt leaves the ring, Smojo attacks Rollins. Kurt tries to separate the two men, but not successful. Joe with a headbutt, but Seth with an integrating super kick. Uh, great segment, great talking. I enjoyed every bit of it. Kurt was great. So uh, that was overall good. Uh, oh, then we go to Kevin Owens in the interview area. Kevin uh, is asked about the superstar shakeup will affect him. He said that they can shake things up however they want, but the cream will always rise to the top like it did at WrestleMania. He tells her about Chris Jericho about the Superstar Shake and if he wants to go to SmackDown to have some success. However, you cannot ask him because Chris Jericho is at home recovering from being sent through a table last week. Kevin says he's the face of America and the number one champion on Raw. He's asked about Dean Ambrose. Kevin says that Dean can run around acting goofy and crazy with the Intercontinental title as long as Dean remembers that Kevin is a man and he will do to 
doing what he did to Chris. And he said, he's a Premier League champion because this is the Kevin Owens show. Which it is. Until Smackdown becomes the Kevin Owens show. Please move to Smackdown. Please. But yeah, that was a great segment from Kevin. I enjoyed it. Then we go to our third match. Uh, Charlotte versus Nia. Charlotte with a running boot to the head. Charlotte goes for figure a four-leg lock. But Nia sends Charlotte to the turnbuckle. Splash in the corner followed by Samoa. Samoan drop for the three count. Charlotte loses. That's confirming she's going to bloody Smackdown. Uh, good match though. Good match. I got into it by the end of it. Uh, then we see a video package for Finn Balor. And then we have a match for Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal. Balor kicks Mahal in the corner. Sling blade. Running drop kick. Sends Mahal into the turnbuckle. Coup de gras for the three count. None of us expected that. <laughs> Mahal was <laughs> ever going to beat Balor. You maybe should give him some decent opponents. Uh, Bray Wyatt appears on the Titan John. He says he ha- this is his new home. He says he did not come alone. He bought a gift. He he says we will see Bray Wyatt torture Randy Orton in his House of Horrors match. He tells Finn to watch himself because he'll be watching him. He tells Raw he's here. Great promo. So Finn, uh, Bray Wyatt is over. To Raw, can't wait. It's gonna be great. Um, oh, and then we get told that Apollo Crews, Callisto, and his Slater and Rhino have all moved to Raw. That was alright. Job essential, apart from the tag team. Why do you want Apollo Crews and Callisto? I do not know. Just get them off, just get rid of them. No use. Then we have Miz versus Sami Zayn. Uh, Zayn sets to a dive to the floor, but Miz pulls Maurice in front of him, so Zayn literally just flips off the ropes and doesn't go over. It was great. I like that bit. The actual finish of the match, Miz is pulled out of the ring as Zayn gets for a clover kick. Maurice grabs Zayn's leg as he comes back in the ring. Zayn with a victory roll for the three count. Zayn wins. Yes, yes, yes. I like it. Let's do this. Oh, now we go to the segment of the night. Michael Cole is with Roman Reigns. No. Hear me out. This is why this is great. Just listen, please. Uh, Michael asks if Roman feels any responsibility or remorse at WrestleMania might have been on to take life. Roman said it was the biggest win of his career. It was also in the most bittersweet. He has respect for the Undertaker. He's got a lot of advice from mentors. How do you prepare to retire a legend? He says he's been in crazy situations. He said he did what he said he was going to do. He said he, he is a big dog in here. This is his yard. Listen, this is where it gets good. Braun Strowman attacks Roman during the interview. Strowman sends Reigns into the wall uh, and over a case onto a table. They continue to battle. Strowman sends Reigns into a metal door in the back area. Back area. Security hold their arms out to tell Strowman to stop. And we all know how well that works. Strowman picks Reigns up and hits him running past them over to a few cases. Punches uh, and then pushes a case against Roman who's against the wall. Uh, th- then they get a stretch for Roman. Strowman's not done. He uh, pushes, grabs R- St- Roman on the uh, stretcher and throws him off a loading dock while a st- strapped to the stretcher. Uh, and then Roman's down and we see officials checking on him. They put him in an ambulance. Strowman says he's not finished with Roman. Shuts the door of the ambulance, lifts the ambulance, and pushes it on its side. He actually lifts an ambulance all the way up and pushes it on his side. It was bloody mental. Um, which was great. That was amazing. It was one of the best segments of Raw's done in a very long time. Well, probably since the Festival of Friendship, to be fair. Uh, and then we see Reigns being placed into a smaller ambulance. And then he actually gets taken away this time. I would have loved to see him do it again. But that would have been overkill. But that was great. Uh, and then before the next match happens. Eli Sampson. Or the Drifter I think he's called. Makes his way to the ringside area. I told he, I got told he would make an appearance. So he did. Uh, and then we have a eight man tag. Primo Epico. So the Shiny Stars. The Club. Cesaro and Sheamus. And the Hardy Boys. Uh, with a good match. Uh, Jeff with a poetry in motion. Flipping over the ropes. Onto uh, the club. And the shining stars. 
Uh, Matt blocks a lung blower and then he hits a twist to fate and Jeff is tagged in and hits a swanton bomb for the three count. Great match, I enjoyed it. Ooh, and now Dana books in the back and she's reading a book until Emma enters. Emma tells Dana let's go and Dana wants to know what Emma means by that. Emma reminds Dana that she was a protege before Charlotte. Um, Emma says that she's here to pick up the pieces. Dana tells Emma that was last year. Well, you have your identity crisis. The entire woman division gone better, including her. No, no, you haven't. She might not be the best, but she is making strides and learning to stand on her own two feet. No, no, you shit. I'm sorry, I said this in my live reaction. I'm going to say this now. You're shit, Dana. Fuck off. She's not going to go with Emma or anyone else anymore. She's not making strides. She's terrible. She hasn't actually done anything. But the segment was good. I just don't like what she was saying, but I just don't like Dana. Um, oh, and then we're in the back. Sasha makes her way to the ring. Sasha says everyone is asking why she's out here tonight. She says she hasn't finished business, but first she wants to bring out the women's champion, Just Bailey. Uh, Bailey thanks Sasha for the introduction. She has something to say. Bailey thanks everyone. They they were with her for her first day in NXT through her WWE debut. Bailey says, "Where are you guys? The twelve year old." In her heart, wouldn't have had a WrestleMania moment. Sasha says WrestleMania did not go as she planned. She wanted to congratulate Bailey on the biggest moment of her career, but that moment is over. She demands a title match. But Alexa Bliss makes her way to the ring. Yes, Alexa's coming over. I told you. Uh, Alexa said she was really heartfelt, but she said it was really nauseating. Um, she said she's the only one who needs recognizing is her. She put. It she put an end to the pathetic Sasha Bailey slideshow to, because it's pretty weird. She said she'd take over the War Women's Division. Alexa is just happy to put the SmackDown drama behind her. Then Mickey James comes out and says she's on Raw as well. The might as well said she is the greatest woman champion of all time. The only six-time women's champion. Do you think your drama is over? Your nightmare has just begun. Wait. Didn't Trish Stratus hold it over six times? I think she did. Oh, God damn it. Uh, Nia attacks Mickey James from behind. She's dead. She literally just saw that so well. She just looked like she'd been killed. Uh, Alexa plushed Tasha at Nia. Nia sends Bailey into the turnbuckle. Hits Simone drop. Sorry. Nia sends Sasha into the turnbuckle and then hits Simone drop on Bailey. Picks up the title bar and she says she's here. It's said this is hers before dropping it on Bailey. Nia leaves the ring. She stares at Alexa before heading to the back. It was great. To be fair, I enjoyed that. And then uh, we advised of Roman Reigns' condition. I think it like dislocated shoulder and cracked ribs, something like that. And they said, it's lucky he only got that. Yeah, it was near. Uh, oh, then we go to our main event of the evening. The champion versus the champion match. Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose. Ambrose goes to the top. Owens goes to the floor. Ambrose stays on the turnbuckle and hits an elbow drop to the chest. Ambrose comes off the road, but Owen with a boot. Ambrose followed by a package small side slam. Ambrose with a runner to counter the pop-up power bomb. Ambrose tries to bounce off the road, but Owen with a super kick. Ambrose with the uh, d- dirty deeds for the fairy camp. Yeah, but it's a good match. I enjoyed that. I think that kind of means Kevin Owens is going o- away. After the match, Chris Jericho music plays and he makes his way to the ring. Jericho with a code breaker to Owens to end the show. It was alright. If it wasn't for the Strowman bits, uh, I would have said it was a pretty shit raw. I enjoyed the tag team stuff. I enjoyed all the call-ups, but overall, it has nowhere near the amount of decent stuff that last week had. But you had the potential to make this night great. That's a problem. There was potential. Let's hope you do better tomorrow. But anyway... Fair enough, it was good. Check out Smackdown tomorrow. Let's hope that's better. Check out my live reactions on my channel for tonight. And then 1 o'clock tomorrow, we'll be having my live live reactions for Smackdown. As always, please give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to more content and I'll catch you.